Eddie Stapleford is the food strategist at Bright Branding Agencies and joins us. Really, Eddie? All of that? That's am I mean, is that what goes on at this thing? Tell us, I mean, like, who gathers and, and what do they talk about? Is this coming up with snappy new ideas or is this about sustaining a, a growing a global population to it's feed. It's probably about sustaining a growing population, and and it's you know it's industry experts, it's health expert, experts, it's governmental uh, lobbyists, etc., who are looking at how we're going to feed an increasingly growing population. I mean, seven billion now, but forecasts of eleven billion by 2100. You know, that's a massive, massive increase. Um, and of course, we've got climate change, which mm. is impacting on our ability to to grow crops, um, maximising the yield. You know, and for example, you know, one percent, uh, sorry, one degree temperature increase in India with lots of the 5% reduction in yield. Well, okay. um, by the time you come to Kenya, um, you've got, you know, the, those figures escalate to 20%. Mm. Um, so, it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a growing problem, literally a growing problem, of how we feed the, the growing will. population. Yeah. Now, we, we do love our props, I have to say. So you've brought some of this stuff in here. I'm going to hold it up. You just talk to me. What, I mean, what is innovative, if you will, about, uh, I think we're going to go on five. Um, what, what's innovative, for example, just briefly go through these. What's it, I, we, if they can see at home, sure. you've got little, what are these, the uh, seeds? They're, they're, they're basil seeds. And they're floating around. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what's quite interesting about those is that obviously, obviously there's viscosity of, of two products there. That you've, you've got a, a capsule around the, um, the basil seeds, and they're made therefore so they can suspend in the liquid. But yeah, they're not sinking to the bottom. No, yeah, that's yeah. right. But what I thought was interesting about that was the whole idea about micronutrients. Right. Um, and how they might be used in, in, in drinks rather than foods as we know them today in terms of the future because it could be that a lot of nutrients that we need are synthesized mm. from ingredients and presented as to, in ways that are novel and different just to make them interesting and you know and there's an example so rather than space age you, you know food paste or, yeah, well, or, exactly. or, or whatever it might be you know which I, I guess was the, was the butt rogers and all the rest of it that we've seen in years gone by it's something much more innovative and much more clever that does deliver taste experiences which are really important in our enjoyment of food. What about this one? Because to me it looks like, you know, it's like um, we've got these, you, you, it's the, a noodle pop, but this sure. is tea, right? Pop yeah, it's, 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 it's bubble tea. And what's interesting about that, you've got three components in there. You, you've, you've got the powder that makes the base liquid. You've got these, these pearls which are encapsulated with... with um, There's the pearls, yep. yeah. Yeah, uh, no, those are the pearls. There. Oh, sorry, um, they're the pearls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're encapsulated with, with, a, with, with a plant gelatin. And then you've got the straw that enables you to suck the, the pearls out of the liquid. But what's really interesting to me about this is the fact that you know, this is a product that originates in China right. and it's coming to you unhydrated. In other words, unlike this no. product, there's no water in it. So, so you, you know, there's no transportation of, of water in terms of virtual water transportation, etc. And it can arrive in the UK or wherever it is else in the world for, for somebody to make that drink as and when they need it. And it gives it longer shelf life. It takes away, you know, barriers around refrigeration, all those kind of things that, for example, that product might have intrinsic. Let me ask you this, though. I mean, this, this, this gathering only, I, I believe, started, what, five years ago, 20, yeah. 2010. Yeah. There's actually, you know, there's food stuff come out of that, like the ideas. I mean, do we have anything on our supermarket shelves that's come from, you know, ideas raised at this, this yeah, gathering? Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely. I think if you look at microprotein that are made from mushrooms, there are, there are products on the market now which are called, you know, uh, meat-free proteins, mm. um, and, and those brands are, and products are readily available. They, they appeal to vegetarians, but they also appeal to individuals who want to reduce their, their consumption of meat, which is something generally in the West we're starting to see, which is really good news. Um, I mean, our meat consumption isn't as high, and whilst vegetarian numbers and vegan numbers are still quite low, the number of people who are really eating more vegetarian food during the week um, is increasing, and that's really good news. Um, I, I mean, meat is such a massively en energy, um, you, know, you know, massive energy yes. consumer. I mean, yeah. one kilo of beef, mm. um, you, you know, go. requires 15 kilos of, of energy. Wow. Okay, I've got to go. Although you are talking to an Australian who loves his meat, you know that, don't you? Hey, thanks, Eddie.